So it's the day after earnings and Tesla stock is down almost 10%. What happens all the time on every earnings, Tesla usually drops down about 10%. But there were some ugly bombshells that Elon did say that could probably bring the price even lower. And we're going to get to that in this video, the good, the bad, and the ugly of what happened yesterday or Q4 of 2023. So let's get down to it because I don't want to waste any time. Smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, man. Let's go. So let's first go ahead and talk about the good because there was there was a lot of good. This quarter was actually not that bad. The list of good stuff is actually pretty long. So let's do that. Starting with operating margin. And I was wrong about this. Now, I did predict an operating margin of 7.6%. Oh, no, 7.5%. This is what we have to beat. 7.6. 6. We got 8.2%. So We've bottomed an operating margin, which is absolutely amazing. The other awesome thing is that now Tesla has close to $30 billion in cash, which is a sheesh moment. $30 billion and $2 billion free of cash flow of Q4. And this is what boggles my mind. If you guys were watching the live stream yesterday, it really boggles my mind because Tesla's cutting prices. The fact that they continue to do this and yet have a free of cash flow of two billion. It just boggles my mind. And again, if you guys were watching the live stream yesterday, I kept saying this, I just couldn't wrap my head around it, that free of cash flow is two billion and they slapped on about three billion or uh, close to maybe four billion of cash on top of the cash belt they had to over $29 billion, which is just amazing. Another thing that they beat, and I'm happy to be wrong, Wall Street was at 16.7%. They had to beat this for auto margins X credits, they got 17.2%. So it's a beat and this seems to be a bottom as well. So that is a sheesh moment. Another really good moment was the fact that Tesla can now potentially produce over 2.3 million vehicles as of now. I know in Q1, when that comes out, it's going to be more and so on and so forth. So these are good stuff so far. The chart here, as usual, the market share is increasing bit by bit. As you guys know, interest rates do have an impact here. So that's why it's been tapering off a little bit. I do expect this to roar up once we have interest rates go lower and once the compact car comes. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Look at this FSD chart, guys. Holy, this is flipping insane. The fact Look how steep this is. Guys, the more, and I keep stressing this on this channel, the more data that we have of FSD, the sooner it can get solved, the sooner it can get solved, the sooner we can get the stock price to go move because then all the Tesla vehicles can get the FSD. And I think this year, all the 400,000 vehicles in North America, or at least in the United States, North America, will be able to get version 12 once it's not beta anymore. And I think if they all do get the FSD version 12, that would be about an axis of, half a billion dollars in profit if they're all paying 200 bucks a month for their subscription. So that is just crazy. Now imagine what's going to happen to all the fleets around the world once every country approves it. And when the data comes out and says this thing is like 10 times safer than humans, drives better than humans, and now the risk is humans. So yeah, we're going to make it, we're, we're going to approve it in our country. And those days are coming. Five years time, seven years time, and that's where most of my bet is. So FSD is crazy. And what else is crazy is that they asked Elon on the call, what, what happened to FSD licensing? He said that majority of auto other car companies are not believing this technology. It would be very smart of them if they contacted Tesla and they asked and looked at Tesla's FSD because the fact that there's no codes, there's no li LiDAR or that massive cameras all around the car, it's just a little computer and there's no codes or line, it's just neural nets. Down the line, I do see other car makers coming to Tesla and saying, hey man, let's license it. It looks like this is where, you know, autos are going anyways and they are going there slowly but surely. Give it till the end of the decade. So that was FSD. Cogs were, uh, was another surprise here. I knew they were going to go lower, but not like this. Look at the chart. Cogs was down 3.2% from Q3 to Q4. From 37,500 to 36,300. That's insane. For the whole entire year of 2023, Tesla managed to bring down the Cogs almost 6% in one year. Incredible. Which other car manufacturer is doing that? that I mean, that's just absolutely in flipping insane. Another insane here is the energy storage. Look at that growth. Look at that line going up close to 15 billion in revenue just, just this year alone. And let me tell you guys, this is just beginning. Q2 of 2024 is when the Shanghai Mega Pack factory is going to be ready to go. And that's going to add on to it. And 
the mega pack factory in laft rope has not even been fully scaled or fully ramped yet and they're planning to so imagine imagine the scalability imagine the revenue and the profits that's going to be insane services and other business in profit now up 500 million dollars opposed from being down 500 million dollars just a few years ago so that was really good the balance sheet guys is flipping stellar look at the current assets it could pay the entire total liabilities if it wanted to which is very healthy for the stock we're very healthy for the company forget the stock very healthy for the company and they don't have any debt that 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 is a stellar balance sheet and a reason why i can sleep at night when i have you know most of my money or my all my money in tesla stuff now when asked about the compact car to elon because we did get rumors that reuters was saying and some other um, establishments that was saying that the second or the middle of 2025 is when tesla will start ramping and start producing the 25,000 compact car and Elon came out and said that yeah we're gonna start uh, producing it on the second half of 2025 so it looks like Reuters rumor seems to be true so that is uh, that is pretty darn interesting when it comes to Optimus now again Optimus we do need to have this in our evaluations now because it's moving really quickly but it's so far ahead. But nonetheless, this is this was absolutely another bullish part of Tesla is that according to Elon, it's advancing very quickly and shipments next year. Now, what does it mean by having shipments next year? What I think personally, I think being shipped to Giga Mexico. I think there's going to be some robots working in Giga Mexico and it's going to be tested out there before it moves on to other things. So I think that's what it means shipments to next year. Let's see the, the, how fast this thing is learning. That's absolutely in flip insane. This is what I call a sheesh moment. This is a sheesh moment. When asked about 4680 batteries, it's ahead of RAM. So that is really good. They're also getting suppliers involved as well. So that is good. So this was all the good stuff that I think was pretty good that could influence the stock in the medium to long term that can really bring in heavy revenue and profits. And so we can have that higher stock price in five years, six years down the line because I am a long term investor not a short-term investor. But let's look at the bad and then the ugly because the ugly will really damage the stock in the very short term. So let's start with the bad. The bad revenue was up only 1%. I mean, this, when you look at it, when they keep saying that Tesla is a high growth company, when they see 1% revenue growth, that is a concern. Then we got the main thing here, which was a missed EPS. Expectation was 73 cents, we got 71 cents. And obviously a miss is a miss. Stock went down because of that. Solar keeps dipping. If you look at the chart, this whole entire year kept dipping and Elon blamed it on interest rates and seasonal. Now, I'm not too sure why this has to do with interest rates. It looks like this thing does get financed. So I did not know that, but apparently it looks like interest rates do affect the solar and obviously Q4 is seasonal. But then again, can't really blame it on, can't really look at Q4 when the other quarters are going bad. But when you scale out and you look at every single year, this year was exceptional, so we can see why. Another bad thing is that there was no vehicle target for 2024. Now, although we were all expecting to get a number, right? Uh, Wall Street was expecting 2.1 million. When I looked back on when Tesla or when Elon said a delivery number, it was in Q1 of 2023, not in Q4. So I think they're looking to see what's gonna happen in Q1, then they can make an intelligent guess based on that. And um, the bad Elon again in earnings call kept blaming interest rates, kept blaming interest rates. So a nightmare scenario would be that interest rates do go down, but Tesla continues to cut prices heavily, not based on COGS. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. So these were the bad things that right off the bat, the stock went down two, 3%. Again, if you guys were in the live stream, that's what happened. Earnings came out, it was a miss. Oh my God, it was a miss. Stock went down two, 3%. It wasn't until the earnings call that we got some ugly bombshells that Elon said that the stock went. <laughs> Let's get down to it. Cause I got like four, four, four or five points here that really, you know, was pretty darn ugly. So first thing, Giga Mexico, he said, will not start until compact car is successful. They're trying to figure out core technology, which is, you know, understandable. And there is super early works going on. But why do you want to delay the factory and, you know, at least make the skeleton, start making the pavement, start making the thing. Don't wait. Because personally, I was under the impression that there was a delay based on some election going on in Mexico. End of this quarter or end of second quarter is when they'll start building. But then they have all the permits that Elon says this. So it looks like they are delaying it. Tesla is delaying it. Nothing to do with Mexico. But we are seeing a new manager for the Giga Mexico, the, the country manager for Tesla. So things are moving to the right direction, but it's very slow, very slow. I would say start making the, you know, the skeleton of the structure, 
the building, all that kind of stuff, and then the core business, because that's inside the building, right? I could be wrong, but again, this was not a good outlook for the um, investors, especially the short-term ones. Second thing, awareness. So the CFO of Tesla, which his name is Tanjia, if I, if I butcher that name, sorry but he said that he they don't want to spend on awareness and that's kind of um like here's the thing tesla doesn't need to advertise you know they don't need to advertise their vehicle everybody knows that tesla's an ev but people what people don't know is that how cheaper how safer how more convenient it is to operate an ev than a gas car people don't know this people still think that yeah, you, you can't go without charging every or two one every one or two hours just listen to donald trump he says it all the time we need to educate people on this that's not the case it's the same thing as gas cars literally the exact same thing but more convenient cheaper easier to operate it makes life a whole lot easier when you have an ev but people don't know that yet people don't know that and this really backs it up when he says that 90 percent of all new tesla customers were new to evs so if 90 percent, yeah we have like you know only two or three or four percent of all you know, cars on the road is EVs, understood. And, you know, Tesla is aiming for the ICE vehicles, not for the internal or not for the uh, EVs because there's not that many EVs out there. But nonetheless, 90% is a lot. It's, it's, you know, people, if you're saying 90% of new customers are new to EVs, then most likely they got educated on how EVs are. Then they came and they bought, right? So that's why I think Tesla should spend on educating people on how easier and cheaper it is to operate an EV. And they don't even have to bring up Tesla because everyone already knows Tesla. When the competitor advertised Tesla benefits, which is absolutely ridiculous. Understand that they don't want to spend money on advertisement, even though that, that may be an investment in, in, in the long term. But they should spend or invest money in educating people on how easier and safer and just cheaper it is to operate an EV. I think this is very important. And the fact that he said it this way, this was not good as a Tesla investor. Yeah, I understand. Don't invest in an advertisement. Your competitors are doing that anyways and you're benefiting. But man, educate people on EVs, man. People don't know. People don't know. That's all. That was the second one. The third bombshell, the ugly bombshell, was the one that everybody was hoping for, but we didn't get it. And it's the 2024 vehicle delivery estimate. As mentioned before, I do think it's going to be in Q1 when they mention it, but Wall Street and institutions were waiting for this and, you know, they control the market, they control the stock, and we didn't get that. In fact, we got something else. We got that vehicle growth rate will be less than 2023, notably, so remarkably, like a lot, not 2022 to 2023, Tesla grew their deliveries or vehicle deliveries about 38, 39%. Notably would mean like 15%, 10%, 20%. And Elon kept saying 2 million over and over again as like production. So maybe they're looking to deliver 2 million vehicles. So let's see what's going to happen. I think they can do 2.2, but we will see. They're saying that the reason why the vehicle growth rate of 2024 is not going to be as good compared to 2023 is because they're focusing on the compact car because as soon as that's and that's that thing's going to scale like crazy i think that vehicle can take tesla to like five six seven eight million deliveries within the next three years that's a long-term perspective looking at it a long term and i totally understand that but i think what people understood wrong is that there's going to be lower deliveries than 2023 no that's not the case 2024 is going to be a record delivery but the growth rate is going to be less, like 15 to 20%. Above 2 million is for sure what Tesla is going to deliver this year. And with that being said, there's going to be stagnation and flatness of the stock. We're not going to be seeing, you know, stock going over 300 or 350 for some time unless there's some serious growth. But this showed Wall Street that, hey, okay, we're going to stay flat for longer. What's the point of having my money in Tesla stock when I can invest it somewhere else until it's time for Tesla? for it to increase their earnings and stuff like that. So again, this will affect Tesla stock in the short term in the next six to 12 months, unless something major changes like FSD, like energy, like maybe Optimus comes online or something. So that adds on to the feel of why Tesla stock is down like 10%. And if you guys have been following me for some time here or X, doesn't matter. I kept I keep saying that 2024 is a recovery year for Tesla. If interest rates really start to go lower this year, then we will see a turning point for sure. And I do think interest rates will go down even a little bit will help. It's still going to be a recovery year for Tesla. So at 25 and onwards, it's going to get interesting. So that was the third bombshell. That was that was a bombshell that nobody wanted, wanted but didn't get. The fourth bombshell was the one that everybody was looking forward to but didn't get a proper answer. Neither do they for the operating margin for autos, which the whole industry, the 
Wall Street and institutions were looking forward for this, but they didn't get this number either. And I get it in the short term, it does not matter because when you have FSD and all these AI components, auto margins are not going to matter. And my thesis is, is that in five, six, seven years from now, Tesla will sell these vehicles at cost, but sell the software, which will be above 60, 80% in margin. That's where the Tesla is going to be making trillions, of, um, trillions upon trillions of money. So that's why auto margins in the short term doesn't matter, but Wall Street cares, institution cares, and they didn't get it. Uncertain. And that's what made the earnings call BAB. We're not done yet. Moving to the fifth one is the 25% voting power for Elon. Now, we did get this drama going on like two, three weeks ago where Tesla, where Elon said that he's uncomfortable, you know, making Tesla a juggernaut or, you know, increasing the AI and the robotics because he's afraid of being kicked out and because he doesn't have enough voting power. So he clarified here again that he is looking for influence and not control. He's even, and this is more of a clarification, he's looking for something, for example, a dual class stock. And what this will do is that it'll give him more voting power without the capital because he doesn't need the capital. It's not about the money. It's about him having influence. He doesn't want some rookie shareholder to kick him out. He wants to have some sort of influence in the company. And it's not about the money. And he's not taking Tesla as hostage, as everyone is saying. He's not taking it as hostage. And he will get the 25% voting power as soon as the Delaware court for the first compensation clears out. So the second compensation package could provide this as well. And uh, those were the ugly bombshells. And that's why the stock is going <whistles> down right now. And I am licking my lips. Mainly, guys, it was the margins and the vehicle growth that really throw everybody off. But... Um, it doesn't matter. These are all short, short term. 2030 is, is when I buy Tesla stock, it's locked till 2030. And I want to buy more. I mean, if it goes, if, I mean, I was like, if it, I was praying to God that if it goes to 200, I'm going to buy. Now it's at 190. It's time, folks. It's flipping time. But overall, guys, overall, this was a 7 out of 10 earnings. Now, not earnings call, but 7 out of 10 earnings. The earnings call was not bad either. It was better than other ones for sure. But the earnings report was pretty decent. I gave that a 7 out of 10. Now, I do wish they were more clear for guidance. When you look at other companies like Apple and NVIDIA, they do a lot of pumping. They go like, yeah, next year we're going to do double. And this year we're going to do like EPS is going to be two, three bucks. Our margins are this. is They're going to grow to this. Tesla didn't do any of those. And with uncertainty and the market doesn't like uncertainty, that's how the reaction we are getting in the market. Again, I don't care about these short term things. I'm actually happy stock is going down because I just want to buy more. I want to buy more. My initial goal was to get a thousand shares of Tesla. I'm at like 750 around there. So if the stock goes lower and I and it gets so low that I mean like 150, 140, I'm talking about there. I'm gonna buy now. But if it goes down that low, man, everything is gonna be dumped in. I mean, I don't think I'll have this desk anymore that I, that I just recently bought. I'm excited. I'm excited. Comment down below. What do you guys think this earnings wall was? Did you like it? Did you not? If you're long. What do you think? If you're short, you're probably going to be pissed. But if you're long, you're probably going to be happy because you're going to buy more. That's what has happened in Q4 of earnings. I'm going to be making a spreadsheet where the stock price could trade out this, this whole entire quarter until Q1 in the next videos. In the meantime, comment down below. What are your thoughts on this? And check out what the stock price could be by 20 flipping 30 in my revised prediction. Check it out. You'll be disappointed. Of course, this is a prediction prediction alone. Take everything with a grain of salt. Do your DD. Guys, get some merch. I bought the dip because this is going to be a massive dip in five years from now. Let's be honest. And subscribe and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.